In this tutorial, we're going to cover everything you need to know to effectively create Microsoft Visio diagrams. We'll start with Visio concepts, then we'll go and look how you can connect objects in Visio, then we'll do step-by-step -step flowchart diagrams, org chart diagrams, floor plan diagram, network architecture diagram, and then we'll look at Microsoft Visio most useful keyboard shortcuts. If you'd like to jump to the specific section in this tutorial, just go to the description and there's a table of content. You can just click on the link and it will take you directly to the place of what you're trying to learn. First, let's overview three most important Visio concepts, shapes, stencils, and templates. Visio shapes are objects that you drag onto your drawing page. And this is what you use to build your diagram. Visio stencils is a collection of shapes. Shapes in each stencils have something in common. They follow the similar pattern and similar theme. For example, basic flow chart stencil has process, subprocess, document, decision, start and end, and data shapes. And cross-functional flow chart has swim lane, separator, swim lane vertical, and separator vertical shapes. And templates used to create particular kind of diagrams. When you want to create a diagram, start with the template for that type of diagram, which you can search when you start new Visio diagram. For example, to create a new cross-functional flowchart diagram, navigate to File tab, click on the New, type in Swim Lane, and then select Cross-Functional Flowchart Diagram. Now let's look at how you can connect objects in Visio. Now let's look at how you can connect shapes in Visio. To do this, you need to drag the shape uh, onto the screen and then once you hover your mouse, it, you see that there are blue arrows that show up. And when you hover on this blue arrow, there are four different options. Typically, those are the four options in stencil. So this might be accounting, account payable, account receivable, and auditing. And once you pick the choice, make the choice of what you're trying to add, Visio automatically not just adds this object, but also creates a connection between the two objects. Let's delete it by selecting both of these objects and clicking the delete button and trying another way of connecting shapes. We can do it by dragging and dropping the accounting shape and an account receivable shape onto the screen. And then you see in the tools section, we have a connector option. Once you hover with connector option selected, it automatically attempts to connect two objects. Let's delete it again and, look at the, and let's look at the third way of doing it. We're switching back to pointer tool. I uh, selected objects and click delete and we're going to do again bring an accounting object and an account receivable object and what I'm going to do now you see when I hover over accounting object I can just take this and drag it so I clicked on the blue arrow that's pointing to the right and I dragged it to the account receivable object and it created an arrow automatically and connected two objects now let's look at how you can draw flowchart diagram now, let's go ahead and create a simple flowchart diagram. To do that, navigate to the New tab and type flowchart in the search bar and select Cross-Functional Flowchart Diagram. Next, select the horizontal type of the diagram because this fits the best to what we're trying to accomplish. Visio created the template with the new swim lanes. Since we're defining the deployment process, we need to identify Agile team members for each swim lane and type their names. You do this by clicking on the swim lane title and typing the role of the team member. Next, you start uh, dragging and dropping shapes from the stencil for basic flowchart diagram into the diagram itself. And then you connect those shapes based on the functions that you're trying to describe. You start with the start shape and then add process shapes and then connect them in the right sequence that would describe what each team member will be doing. For optional steps, you use subprocess. And for decision steps, you use decision shape. If you would like to follow along, 
feel free to download the template for this diagram from www.howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. Once diagram is complete, you can experiment with the different design options. If you go to Design tab, you have a lot of choices in terms of design themes, variants, and backgrounds. Each theme has its own set of variants. And you can pick any background that you'd like. Because software deployment process is very sequential, you can define different stages for the deployment process. For example, key stages for release process are product increment, which is PI planning, architecture, unit testing, UAT testing, and then product deployment. And then the last step in the process is to review and make final corrections. Typically, you would want to review diagram yourself and also show it to one of your colleagues to make sure you get feedback and make sure nothing is missed. A lot of times, diagram is just work in progress. And over time, you might make some additions and corrections in the diagram. So I always like versions. I do versions in the file name and I say version 1.1, 1.2, or version 2 for major updates. And now let's look at how you can draw organizational chart diagram in Visio. By the end of the video, I'll show you how to create this type of org chart diagram in Microsoft Visio. Fastest way to create organizational chart is Visio is to type org in the search bar, which shows organizational chart. And it shows you multiple options. You can do wizard, you can do uh, department organizational chart, and you can do hierarchical organizational chart. We'll do department organizational chart. That's the best fit for what we're trying to do. And here you see Microsoft put together right away uh, the sample uh, Visio org chart. You can use this if this matches your structure. But we will start from the beginning, so I'm going to delete this org chart with all the shapes. Now, to create the organizational chart, we'll be using a um, chart for the manufacturing company. We'll start with executive notch. And let's do a quick overview before we move any further. We have multiple shapes here. Uh, executive is the top of a organizational chart hierarchy. Managers report to executives. And then you have different people reporting uh, to managers. So these are the key shapes we will be using. So we'll start with executive. And executive would be a president. So you just drag and drop shape as I did. And let's zoom in a little bit closer. So we'll put a name here. And which, what I did, I just clicked on the title. Uh, it was an empty um, text box. And I just started typing. And when I'm done, I clicked on another place outside of the shape or maybe another text box inside the shape. In the typical structure, VPs report to the president. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take manager's notch and drag it on top of the president. And you see what it did? It created reporting a hierarchy. And I'm going to say that this will be um, Darwin. Now I'm going to create another VP, VP of production. And I'm going to do the same thing. Drag uh, VP of production shape on top of the president's shape. And that's how you build reporting hierarchy in Visio. And uh, I'm quick, quickly going to add another shape for VP of sales. 
So now you see we built top of the company's hierarchy. Uh, what we're going to do next is we are going to create a managerial position. So under each VP, we'll create a manager, and then I'll show you a couple things you can do with employees. So manager, we're going to use the same. Uh, we can use the same notch, uh, same color, or we can use position notch. I'm going to use position notch just to show the difference. So under VP of Sales, we'll create a manager. Managers or VPs, they hire consultants on specific projects. So what we will do here, we will uh, drag a shape, and now we have consultant. To show that vacancy reports directly to Jane, I'm going to drag this shape and drop it under Jane. And you see it created relationship. Now I'm going to move shape a little bit to the left. So it will show that reporting structure is uh, vacant position reports directly to Jane. I'm going to build uh, some additional shapes in the diagram uh, through quick forward because you, you, I think you got the idea and um, what I'm going to do just to create the structure so we can use it uh, to show you additional cool features that Visio provides. So now I'm done uh, building the structure and what you can see is we have a very nice org structure diagram. Let's see what else we can do. For example, sometimes a president might have an assistant, so you do the same thing. You take a system notch and you drop it on the president. Now, what else you can do to make it look nice are typically org charts. Uh, make look very nice when you give them pictures. So what you can do, you can click on the notch and you do a right mouse click and say picture, change picture. And what we're going to do, we will look at... Uh, couple of the stock photos. So this is Amani Burke. We'll just insert Amani. Then we'll do the same thing for Leslie. Um, I just need to find Leslie. Then we will have Jane here. And I'll do it in a fast forward so you guys don't have to see me struggling because it's the same operation. So now we're done with all the pictures, and I've noticed that I made a mistake, and I'm just going to show you how uh, to fix it. You see that for all the managers, um, Jane Smith and um, Robert uh, Siddiq, I used uh, blue shapes. And uh, mistakenly for Andrea Roberts, I used VP shape. So what I'm going to do, the easiest way, you can obviously delete it and bring the right shape. But if you want to keep the information um, that's already in the shape and just fix the shape, there is an easier way to do it. So what you do, you select the shape, and you see on the Home tab, there is a Change Shape button, and you pick the right shape, and the right shape for, for me is the blue shape. And now the change is made. Now let's zoom out a little bit, and I'll show you a couple cool things, uh, what you can do. First of all, you can change the design um, and view of your diagram, and the best way to do it is you, there is a new org, ta org chart tab uh, in Visio that you can see, and you can just switch between different options and it will change the layout for the shapes and pick even a different shape. So we are in uh, notch type uh, layout and that's a default, but you can switch and, and try different ones. Since we're here in this tab, I'm going to pinpoint a couple other cool options. So you can change different layout. We use horizontal uh, center layout, but there are other ones. So if you change them, you see how it redesigns the uh, diagram right away, but keeps all the information in the shapes. You can use vertical or side by side. I'll let you play with those, play with those different layouts. Um, you can also use option best to fit to the page, right? And that moves it uh, directly for you uh, based uh, on how Visio thinks is the best fit for the page. You can also move it by selecting everything and moving it around. You can also select spacing between the shapes by clicking the plus and minus buttons next to the spacing icon. And if you're a sophisticated user, what you can do, you can import organizational chart, and uh, that's a topic for another video. 
or you can export the structure and compare the data. This allows you the, the cool features that this allows you to maintain the org chart uh, from the uh, database and rebuild it if you have large organization and you don't want to build it every time manually. You can just use the import feature and re-import the data and it will resync everything. There are a couple additional cool notches that you can use. For example, if you want to add title to the diagram, you can say uh, just drag and drop the title date notch, and you can say this is ABC Company uh, or whatever the company is, uh, um, and then it will automatically create a title for you. Uh, a couple other cool things. Um, if you know that you have like multiple team members, for example, team three team members reporting directly, like we knew that uh, three people, three VPs report directly to president, you can drag the three position uh, notch and uh, dra uh, drag and drop it under vacant position, for example, uh, and this will rebuild the structure and will automatically build three positions underneath of the vacant position. You can do it for any shape. What if you have more than three uh, positions or less than three? You can use multiple shapes uh, structure and you can just drag and drop it under the shape and then it will provide you the questions. How many shapes would you like to add? What type of shapes? is pretty cool and then you pick the hierarchy what's the best fit for this particular reporting hierarchy sometimes organization run projects so what you do you can identify project group and you use what's called team frame so you just drag team frame uh, you group this and uh, and then the last thing I'm going to show you is the dotted line reporting relationship so sometimes people report what's called dotted line so they have primary reporting relationship but also indirect reporting relationship so let's say Andrea reports uh, to also VP of sales, not just global marketing. So we just drag this line and that creates this dotted line reporting relationship. Now let's look at some other cool features of Microsoft Visio, what it allows you to do. If you click on the design tab, we can quickly change the design. Maybe you like the layout, but you don't like the design. So Visio provides a lot of themes and each theme has variant and you can also pick a background. So let me uh, show you one option and then you can experiment based on what you're trying to do and pick the one that you like. So you pick the theme that you like and I'm just gonna move uh, from theme to theme and you see how it changes the picture. Uh, you can pick, for example, modern design uh, and it not just changes the uh, color of the shapes, it changes fonts as well. And within modern design, for example, you can pick different variants you can also change uh, col not just colors, but you can also change type of connectors and um, use different effects and use different colors. So if we pick different connectors, maybe let's put slice connector if this is what you like. And then backgrounds, a uh, couple pre-built backgrounds. Obviously, you can insert your own uh, image for the background, but let's just pick this world and you see this. Now you have a global manufacturing company. Looks very good. I like it. Uh, maybe we can disagree on design uh, colors and themes, but uh, the only thing I don't like is uh, the size of the font. It's kind of hard to see. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all. You can select all by dragging uh, all the shapes, or you can also select all by pressing Control A on the keyboard. And then we go back to Home tab and click Font Increase, and you can probably increase it up to uh, limits where you can looks like Antonio is hard to fit but I think this is pretty good. Now let's look at how you can draw floor plan diagram in Visio. To do this calculation, I decided to use Microsoft Visio, create floor plan, and then use automatic features of Visio to calculate square footage. And this is what we're gonna focus on in this video. I'm gonna show you how to create a simple floor plan, how to do calculations, and how to use all the cool features Visio provides related to floor plan. To create floor plan in Visio, you need to launch the application and type floor plan in the search box. As you can see, there are a lot of different plans Visio allows you to create, like office layout, home plan, floor plan, directional map 3D, and a lot of others. So if you need those specific ones, please explore those options. But in this video, we're gonna focus on the floor plan. I'm gonna click on the floor plan. And as you can see, Visio brings all the stencils on the left needed to create the floor plan. By default, 
Visio opens walls, shells and structure stencils. But you also have points of interest, electrical and telecom, drawing tool shapes and dimensional architecture. And you can also add more shapes as needed. Just wanted to mention before I forgot that if you're interested to learn more about the subject, make sure to click the subscribe button. We have tons of things in the pipeline and I'm excited to share all of them with you. It is very simple to create floor plan if your room is rectangular. You just select rectangular room in Visio and bring it in into the uh, main screen. Visio allows you to zoom in so you can see bigger size of the room and you can see the sizes. So make sure as you're creating floor plan that you measure the size of the room first and then you can adjust the sizes here in the application. This particular room we are looking at is 21 feet by 26 feet and 3 inches. Now let's add a door into our room. You can just drag the door stencil and it will automatically add into the wall. So this is the door. You can do a couple things with the doors. You can make it bigger depending upon what the size of your door is. Typically it's three feet door that you have in the room. So you can play with this. If it's hard to adjust it with just the mouse, you can always click properties and say, okay, my door is three feet and it will become a three feet door. Uh, you can also change uh, how far the door is opened here. <laughs> and obviously doors can open and close in a different sizes of the room, so you can play with that too. To do that, you just do a right mouse click and you can say revert a uh, left right opening you can do that uh, or you can also reverse in and out opening so those are the very cool features as with any Visio stencil you can copy and paste so if you select the door you can cop, uh, copy the door and then paste it and I accidentally selected format painter which I didn't intend so you can uh, select the door click copy and then click paste and it will create another door if you want to maintain the size so maybe it's the walkthrough room right uh, and uh, this way you don't have to adjust the sizes after you create it creation of windows in the floor plan is also extremely easy you drag the window stencil into the room and drop it right on the wall you can adjust window sizes the same way If you'd like to learn more about Microsoft Visio, I recommend the online training course. I carefully selected this training course and hope you will enjoy it. Just navigate to howtoanalyzedata.net slash Visio to take advantage of the discounted price. I make a small commission to support this channel, but don't buy anything unless you need it. Now let's continue and have more fun. If your house consists of just rectangular rooms, you can bring in another rectangular room and adjust as needed. And you can do as many of those rectangular rooms as you need. As a next step, you can add doors and windows into those new rooms that you just put together. On the other hand, if your house does not have rectangular rooms, but all the rooms or some of the rooms are odd shapes. Visio still makes it possible to do floor plan even for odd shape rooms. To do floor plan for the odd shape rooms, you need to bring in wall stencils one after another and create configuration of the room of the odd shape. It is a little bit more work, but the good thing, it is still possible. The reason I selected Visio to create a floor plan is because Visio can calculate square footage of the created floor plan automatically. This is a very nice feature and very useful if you're trying to calculate square footage, especially for odd shapes room. To calculate square footage, you need to take the space stencil and bring it into the space. 
in this example, I brought it into the first room I've created in this floor plan. The next step is you do a right mouse click and click auto size. And as you can see, the space stencil expanded to fill in the size of the room. And it automatically calculated the size, which is 551 square foot. You can also rename the office here by clicking on properties and saying what's the actual name of the room. It could be master bedroom in this example. If you think that the Visio is the right application to do the work that you're trying to do and build the floor plan, make sure to check out other training links I provide in the description for this video to help you learn more about Visio. And good luck on your project. <laughs> and now let's look at how you can draw network architecture diagram in Visio. In this section, we're going to look at how you can create professionally looking 3D networking diagram in Microsoft Visio. So first thing you see is this screen when you launch Microsoft Visio. We're going to pick a blank drawing, or you can basically pick a detailed networking diagram. It doesn't matter because we're going to pick some stencils uh, that will serve our purpose the best. As you know, when you pick the blank screen, you don't have any uh, stencils here. So you have to select the stencils and these are the uh, shapes that you're going to use when you draw your diagram. So we're going to click more shapes button and we're going to click network and we are going to click uh, network and peripherals 3D. I found that this is probably the most professionally looking. You might have different opinions, obviously, but that's uh, what I like. Um, and there are different shapes here. Um, you have uh, servers, ring network, pretty much all the items that you may ever need um, when you try to represent networking. We're going to start with servers and we're going to um, take the server box and we're going to bring it into the main screen. Um, I kind of envision that my diagram will be more horizontal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the view of the uh, page. And uh, uh, to do that, I am going to go to design orientation. And instead of portrait, I'm going to uh, pick landscape orientation. So this way I can represent better what I'm trying to represent. So this is going to be my first server. And what I'm going to do now, I am going to give the server some characteristics. Um, and they would be the type of operating system that server runs, location, memory, IP address, uh, IP address type, and uh, give the server name. This is not necessary for every diagram. You have to decide what you specifically want to represent. But this is something that uh, I'd like to represent here because this is something that um, uh, makes uh, value and uh, adds uh, descriptive information for my viewers. So I've added the information for my server. I'm just going to zoom it in a little bit. And there are a couple of tricks you can use in order to see this um, in a better way. First of all, you can hide the shapes and stencils. This will give you more room on the screen to see it. You can unhide them as easily. Um, or you can zoom in and zoom out into the areas. This is the zoom in button and this is the zoom out button. So what you see, it's a Windows uh, Server 2012 uh, located at Milwaukee Data Center. It has 8 gig of RAM, um, IP address, and this is the static IP. Now, I kind of don't like it when it's on the, at the bottom. So I'm going to move it to the side of the server box. In order to do that, I, I click once on the server and you see this um, yellow box. This is uh, where the center of the text is located. So all I need to do, I just need to drag this yellow box and move it to the left of the server. So I kind of like it a little bit more. Uh, now, I also would like to add information for the server, like a server name, which is different from all of this uh, descriptive information for the server. And if you want to edit this, you can, for example, if you want to say, OK, this is my OS, which stands for operating system, you can do that. And you can say, OK, this would be bold. Uh, and the operating system name is not going to be bold. And maybe location will be bold. And all this information will be bold. Um, the type of information and the information itself will not be displayed as bold. 
right? So probably if you do that, though, uh, you might want to align it to the left. Right now it's uh, right aligned text. You probably want to align it to the left, and then um, this is how it's going to look. And then it probably might make sense to, to have it here. So it's just going to be more professionally looking. This is some interesting uh, tricks of what you can use in Microsoft Visio. Now, as I mentioned, I'd like to add the server name. And to do that, uh, I'm just going to bring in, um, there are a couple ways to do it. First of all, you can add text. Um, and you can just uh, bring a text box here. So you go insert, and you insert the text box. And you can pick between horizontal text box and vertical text box. I'm going to pick horizontal text box. But in my case, I'd like to prefer to insert callouts. Um, they come in the different shapes. And for this particular uh, server name, what I'd like to do, I'd like to insert the, this shape. And I'm going to name it as a sales server. 01 and this would be my server name so it's not a dot it's a dash 2 and this would be my uh, sales server 01 and I'm just gonna make it bold as well and you can choose fonts you can pretty much apply any formatting that you like and I'm gonna put it underneath of this server now this is my first server and the good thing is um, now I can do copy and paste uh, I can, first of all, I can group these three boxes. I can select, uh, it's actually two boxes, a server box with the description and the callout uh, in terms of Visio objects. So I can do a right mouse click and I can select group and group. And now I can drag it as a single object, which is very nice. And you can group as many objects uh, as you need. So that's the purpose of the grouping function. Now what uh, I can do as well, I can copy this. And I'm just going to show it um, through the menu because you can also do it through the keyboard. So you did right mouse click copy and then you did paste. And here you go. You've got a second server, right? And the uh, second server might run the same operating system, but will definitely have uh, a different server name and different IP address. Um, document sharing 01. And I'm just going to change IP address so instead of... Uh, um, I have to ungroup it, unfortunately. Grouping, ungroup. And now I should be able to edit text. So this would be 0, 02. Um, I am going to copy it again. Um, and I'm just going to copy and I'm going to do paste. So this is going to be my server 3. And this would be marketing box, marketing files, or marketing share. It doesn't really matter as long as it represents uh, the actual names for the purpose of this demonstration. I'm just going to use marketing sharing. This would be 03. And uh, now you can uh, add some other features of the typical networking diagram. Uh, for example, you can add the firewall. And you can choose the size of the firewall. Um, and if necessary, you can use connectors and connect your server to the firewall. If you choose to do that, you probably would want to um, change the location and play with the location of the boxes. Um, so you, it wouldn't uh, overlap with your text. Um, so probably if you're trying to display connections, it makes sense maybe to, to have firewall on the left. Um, so let's do that. I'm just going to remove this connector. I'm then going to do control Z or you can do undo. I'm going to switch back to pointer tool, drag the servers to the right, have the firewall on this side and then use my connectors to connect the server here. And uh, you can certainly play with the lines uh, and make it look 
the way you want it to. So it probably would make sense. This would be the most professional line. And uh, you can have other features of the line, like arrows and some other things, as you need to. So this would be my second line, and this would be my third line. It makes sense for it to go, kind of to display the network connectivity. In the previous section, we've created professionally looking 3D networking diagram. Uh, if you would like to learn more how this was done, just go back and watch uh, the first video. In this section, we're going to look how to make it look prettier and more professional. We just use default objects and uh, default fonts and default lines from Visio. Now we'd like to add uh, some specificity and uh, make it look uh, more professional and uh, use more professional design scheme, uh, maybe potentially uh, adding some arrow endings and using some features of the Visio that are easy to use, but at the same time help you make your diagram look uh, prettier. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the lines. And you see that these lines, they don't have uh, any arrows in the end. And Visio allows us to add arrows. Sometimes you want to show the data flow. In this way, it's bidirectional, right? It goes from firewall into the server and back from the server into the firewall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the home, uh, click a pointer tool. This is where we can select the object and look at the properties of the object. And here we're going to look at uh, what type of connector, first of all, we can use. Could be a straight connector. Right, and this is the difference between the straight connector and the other connector that we had. I'm going to use undo button to go back. I like this one more. I don't like uh, straight connector, but that's just my preference. Um, I'm also going to look at the format shape. And here uh, you see the format shape um, details on the right. And it shows uh, what are the options that are available. First of all, we can change color. We can change uh, uh, the dash type. Right now it's solid, but you can use some dashes here if you want to. I'm going to keep it as is. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the begin arrow type, and I'm going to uh, use this type of arrow. And I'm also going to uh, do the end arrow type. And I'm going to use the same type of arrow. And I'm going to do this for all the arrows. To me, it's more professional. You might disagree as a viewer, um, but um, good thing to know is that you have choices and you can choose something that you consider to be professional looking. So this arrows. Now, I, I don't like these colors. I mean, just because they're default and everybody's probably using it without understanding that there are some easy ways to make the color thing better. And I'm going to show this to you real quick. If we go to design tab, um, we have themes option. Right, and uh, you can just click here and see how many of those themes are available. Um, I'm not a professional designer, but uh, if I see something that looks professional, I like that. Uh, so uh, if you're the same way, this is really helpful. And you can pick uh, a different themes here. So for example, let's just try this one. And you can probably even move from theme to theme and, and pick something that you like. So let's say I found something that uh, I like. Um, which this one looked pretty similar to original one um, but I kind of like the modern design even though servers typically not depicted so this is probably the the best one now you have some variations of this so once you selected the modern design right you can choose the color theme and uh, play with the colors right so there are a lot of different options for the colors um, what you got to keep in mind when you pick the design theme, keep in mind that it's most likely will be printed at black and white. So if you pick um, very contrast colors or something that would be on a darker background, it might be hard to see when you print it. So that's what I always try to keep in mind um, when I print such diagrams. And you see when you change the theme and variant, it also changed the stencils and shapes and how they're going to look when you bring them over. So keep that in mind too if you're planning to add additional objects. You can also change and add background. So, for example, if it's like a global network, uh, you can put a global uh, background if you like. So that also looks professional, but you might want to reconsider the variants and the colors. 
uh, once you do that. So this is probably gonna look a little prettier. And now let's look at the Microsoft Visio most useful keyboard shortcuts. I'll start with my favorite shortcut that helps me align shapes. As you can see in e-commerce shopping cart, some of the shapes are misaligned. So what you need to do, you need to select all the shapes and press F8 button. That brings align shape dialog box. And in my case, I'm going to align them horizontal alignment in the center. My other favorite shortcut is control S, which helps me save the document, which is just an equivalent of clicking the save button here. In Visio, you need to constantly change between pointer tool, connector tool, and text tool. And you can do it by pressing control one to select the pointer tool. And this way you can move the objects or resize them as needed. Uh, you can use control two to select the text tool and make the changes to the text. And click escape to leave the text editing option. And you can use control three to switch to the connector tool. And this way you can connect objects. Next, let's look at the set of shortcuts to help you manipulate the objects. For example, to move the object, you need to select the object and use arrow keys. You can move it up, you can move it right, you can move it left, you can move it down. If you need more precise movements, you need to sh use shift arrow. Shift arrow allows you to move objects in the smaller increments. Control L helps you rotate shape to the left. Control R helps you rotate shape to the right. Control G allows you to group objects so you can move them as one single object. To do that, you need to select all the objects that you're trying to group and press Control G. Then you move them as a single entity. To ungroup the objects, you need to press Control Shift U. Oftentimes, you works with multiple objects and they are laying on top of each other. To move objects back and forth, you can use Control shift f to bring object to the front and Control shift b to bring object to the back. Oftentimes, you need to draw different shapes in Visio. There are different keyboard shortcuts to help you switch between the drawing tools. You can use Control 4 to select pencil tool, Control 5 to select freeform tool, which allows you to maybe draw a cloud if you're working on the architecture diagram. Control 6 allows you to select the line tool, which allows you to draw a straight line. Control 8 allows you to select rectangular tool, so you can draw rectangle boxes and you can start typing text right away. Control 9 allows you to select ellipse tool so you can draw ellipse shapes. One of my favorite shortcuts is Control Shift P, which allows you to activate Format Painter. Format Painter is helpful when you need to copy attributes from one object to another, and these attributes include color of the object, format of the text, and a lot of different things. To do that, you need to select the object then press Control shift p This activates Format Painter, and then apply it to a different object, which mimics the attributes of the original object. You can always use Control z to undo the last operation if it's possible. You can also use Control a to select all objects in the diagram. This allows you to move them very effectively as one single object. You can also use Control C, Control C to copy an object and then Control V to paste exactly the same object and then make modifications as needed. You can also copy and paste groups of objects. You need to select them first, press Control C and then Control V. Now let's look at the keyboard shortcuts that help you work with the shape's text. For example, you can select the shape and use Control-U to underline text. 
and you can undo it with Control Z. You can also use Control B to make text bold or normal, and Control I to make it italic. You can also combine underline, bold, and italic. You can also use Control Shift A to make all text caps. You can use Control Shift less sign to make text smaller, or you can use Control Shift greater sign to make text larger. Sometimes you need to insert the picture, and my secret shortcut is Control Shift 2, which allows you to crop the picture. To insert online picture, we can click Insert Online Picture, type Server, find the server image we are looking for, click Insert, and now we can use Control Shift 2 and crop it and remove all unnecessary items. For example, we don't like shade, and this allows me to remove it. Once you're done, you need to hit Enter or hit Outside. If you like the content, please make sure to click the like button and share with your friends. Also, there's tons of information in the description of this video. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.